This is the look. How and why did our Georgian ancestors make and wear false eyebrows? Hi everybody, I'm David Harper and in this video I'm going to show you a little clip of my new history stand-up show called A Romp with the Georgians, your British and American and Australian ancestors. So it's funny stories, dastardly tales, things that our history teachers should have told us, but they seem to have forgotten. All content from the show is taken from my book. There's a link in the video description to buy the book if you want. It's been described by some as a bit like horrible histories, but for grown-ups. Although it's a family-friendly show, so I'd say ages 12 and upwards. Packed with true stories you didn't know you wanted to know and probably won't believe. I, of course, cover wigs too in the book, and in fact, here's a couple of reviews on the book. Here we go. Giles Brandreth says, huge fun and amazingly informative too. Then Graham Garden, you remember Graham Garden from The Goodies? He read the book. He said, it's hard to believe that such stylish silverware and elegant architecture were produced by this bunch of hooligans. Enjoy the romp. Real stories about real people, our ancestors long gone and forgotten. How did they live? How did they love? What did they do for hobbies, for work? How did they interact with one another? What did they think of their world? And see what you think of them now. It's heartwarming that true, unbelievable but true, funny and outrageous, yes, in places, but I guarantee you will leave the theatre or finish reading the book knowing something that really has blown your mind. It might even make you look at your life the way you are in a very different way too, because the Georgians, their DNA is in all of us. You, me, we are made, we are partly created by these people, long gone and forgotten, but highly important in the history of the world. And I think you're going to be very proud of your Georgian ancestors. Right, let's get to the clip then of my stand-up history show, A Romp with the Georgians, asking the bizarre question, why did our Georgian ancestors make and wear false eyebrows? How did they do it? What are you going to do? What you do today, you paint them in. Well, the Georgians painted them in using cork. They'd burn the cork and paint it in. They'd get soot from an oil lamp and rub it in. The problem with that, when you go to a party, you sweat, your eyes drip with soot and black face. Look, I mean, some ladies are going for that look tonight. I can see that. But there was a great alternative. A way of creating, literally, false eyebrows. The Georgians were very eco, ahead of their time. They created homemade fake eyebrows using a natural product, a furry, hairy product. Any ideas what it might be? Caterpillars. Caterpillars would be a good one. Why didn't they think about that, madam? <laughs> now, and luckily for you, ladies and gentlemen, this is a bit experimental here. So I caught it, yes. I skinned it, and I dried out the fur, and I'm going to show you exactly what a Georgian of high fashion would look like with false eyebrows. This is the look <laughs> of a high fashionista circa 1750. I mean, ladies, you can barely keep your hands off me. <laughs> this is what they looked like, which is fine to a point. I've just used some modern glue. The Georgians didn't have it. They used to have to use animal fat. And then they would go out and they'd always be conscious of the fact that an eyebrow might fall off. That's not a good look. Can you imagine? Seriously? I mean, that is not a good look. This is even worse. You don't even know it. You've had a few gins. It falls and it drips down your face. So you would rely on your friends, ladies, who you could rely on, to keep an eye out for eyebrow slippages. 
Everybody have a little pot of blue, go, oh, your eyebrows just dropped, my darling. Yeah, let's go and fix your eyebrow. That's fine. Fine if you're out with your friends. Not so good if you're out with your husbands. And if you want to know more about Georgian husbands, then come to one of my Romp with the Georgians theatre shows. They're about an hour and a half long in two sections with a break in the middle. There are several booked around the UK and the audiences will build once we get through this COVID period. You can also book me privately if you want. Oh yes, you can get in touch for a fee. And in the meantime, you can buy a book. There's a link down below. We cover all topics of stories that seriously you won't believe and I bet you you've never even heard, including beauty spots of the Georgian period. How and where to wear them to send the right message because this was a form of, I suppose, text messaging from the 18th century and you needed to know the language of spots and make sure you wore them in exactly the right place, otherwise you'd send exactly the wrong message and you really didn't want to do that. So, what about pets? The Georgians loved pets, just like we love pets. They like them exotic, they also like them terribly dangerous, pets that actually killed people. They quite liked them a lot and talk about killing. Georgian jobs, the jobs that your ancestors had to do were truly, in some cases, outrageous. No wonder the average lifespan was 40 years old, we'll get to that. Georgian inventions also. You can thank your Georgian ancestors for the greatest inventions on the planet. Things that changed the world for the better forever. Steam train, 1825, the first passenger train, Georgian invention. Democracy, hundreds of millions of people around the world today take it for granted. You can thank your Georgian ancestors who fought and literally died for it. Loads of inventions, including a really interesting one by a chap called Joseph Merlin in 1760. He invented, whilst drunk, the roller skates. All sorts of shenanigans. So keep a look out for my stand-up history show, A Romp with the Georgians. I'm David Hopper, and I hope to see you on the road. Cheerio.